Well, now that the engine's out, we'll go ahead and get it put on the stand, start tearing apart, see what's the matter with it. Okay, we got the engine mounted up on the stand. Try and get them pistons out of the bottom side, so we're going to have to get all the caps off, get the crankshaft off. I'm going to do some measuring on those bores before I start even try to take it apart and find out what I got. Now it's a 4 inch bore. I'm going to get the micrometer set up. Lock it in on 4 inches. Clamp that lightly in the vise. I'm going to get the dial bore gauge set up. Okay, we've got that zeroed out at four inches. Pretty good ridge on these cylinders. Top of the bore, measuring dead on four inches. And it is there too. It's not out around. Go down in further. About three thousandths over down there. Come up right below the ridge. Sixteen thousandths over there. Twelve thousandths that way. Pretty out around too. Check this front cylinder and see what we've got. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but right at the top of the bore, that's only one thousandths over. Actually, a thousandths under there. And then drop down below the ridge. That's too far out to even register on my gauge setup. And that would be 17 thousandths over. About 9 thousandths over there. So these sleeves are shot. And I have to get new pistons and sleeves. So I guess I don't have to be too careful with the, careful with the pistons removing them. See if we can get one knocked out and see what it looks like. Okay, in order to get this crankshaft out, pulley's going to have to come off first, and the whole front cover is going to have to come off to get that out. And then I'll have to remove the oil pump. At that point, I'll be able to remove the main rod caps, main caps. Hopefully, lift the crank out of there and get it out of the way. And then turn it over and try and knock these pistons out of the bottom. Or at least the stuck ones. See what we got. Let's get started. Get the puller set up on there and see if it comes off. You have to be careful not to break that pulley. I'm fairly certain those things are made out of unobtainium. Now it's actually coming. Now flip the engine back upright and get the front cover off. Before the cover comes off, this oil line has to come off. Which is just a nut down here on a T and comes up, so it'll be easy. This whole distributor, everything's going to have to come off. It's going to be pretty much a complete teardown on this engine. Yeah, that's the distributor drive and the governor weights are in there. Surprisingly clean in there. Yeah, I think Ray's flipped the motor upside down again. Start getting the crank out. Yeah, 
And now we're going to have to remove this oil line, the oil pickup. And we're ready for the rod and main caps to come off. Not sure what the secret is to removing that. I haven't picked up a shop manual yet. I've got one coming. Mark those caps and make sure they stay in the right order. Okay, my battery went dead on the camera yesterday, so I did not get removing the fuel pump. But all I wound up doing, I put a pair of channel locks on it, turned it a little bit, and then I was able to wiggle it up out of there, so that wasn't so bad. Also off camera, I cracked loose all these bolts, so they're ready to come out. So we'll get started on that. Crank scored a little on that bearing. Bearing scored too. Hopefully that will polish out. Really don't want to have to replace the crankshaft too. That one scored a little bit too. I don't know if you can see on camera or not, but these main caps have shims under them too. So we have to be careful. To keep them the same. Or keep it all together, at least for the time being, until I know for sure what I've got here. That main bearing is trashed. Now the bottom half of that front main doesn't look too bad. Hopefully the crankshaft will check out good. Hey, okay, now I'll see if we can get those pistons out. Well, they're not going to come out of the bottom like I was hoping because it's not going to clear any of the main journals on any of them. So they're all going to have to come out the top. I'm support the front of the engine with a jack and a block of wood. Be some pretty severe beating on here, I think. Well, I'll see if we can get any of them to move. Use this brass rod to try and minimize the damage. That one moved. That one's beginning to move. Now there's one of the easy ones out. Looks surprisingly clean. Too bad the sleeves are bad. We'll assess it a little further once we get these pistons out of here. This one not so good. All the rings are stuck in it. are stuck in that one too. So it's mainly two and three. Two is definitely the worst one that were stuck. Block of wood is going to prevent number one from coming out so I'll have to remove that jack. Number one is pretty clean too. I'm going to put these main caps back on just to keep everything in order. Main caps are just like the rod caps, it's important you keep them in order, otherwise you have to have it a line honed. But after looking at this, you can't mix them up anyway. Because the rear one's obviously wider. And you got the middle one and the front one. Normally the thrust bearing goes in the middle on most engines, but it's on the front on these. So it can't be screwed up, but anyway it's all together and this way parts won't get lost or mixed up. Also see there's center punch marks. It's an old mechanics trick. There's one there, two there, three on that one, four on that one. Good way to 
know which piston came out of which hole. But it also tells me that this engine's definitely been rebuilt somewhere in the past. Which makes it even more disappointing that it's in the condition it's in. The crankshaft, I don't feel any deep gouges in it. So hopefully just polishing it up will take care of it. I don't know how well you can see that. Grab a flashlight. Two is definitely the worst. Even the ones that aren't rusted, there's no crosshatch pattern left at all anymore. There's a pretty good ridge on all of them. It's pretty disappointing. I was hoping to get by with a hone job and put it back together, but I think that would be a bad idea at this point. Well, pretty much nothing but bad news here. I have to I think I'm gonna make my own sleeve puller. Get these sleeves pulled out. Should be a pretty straightforward process. So there's just O-rings on top and bottom. Get the new ones, just put them in the freezer. They should supposedly pop right into place. We'll find out when that time comes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Like, uh, I originally planned on getting this running before I did anything else to the tractor, but with this turn of events, I think we'll shove this aside for now and work on stripping down the rest of the tractor, getting it ready for paint. Catch you next time. Bye.